I am going to experiment today with my instant pot. I'm going to do something I've never done before. This is going to be a really simple dish and I'm going to do it as simply as I can because I mean gourmet cooking can be fun when you've got guests coming for dinner but sometimes you just want to get a one pot wonder meal on the table as quickly as possible. So that's what I'm going to sort of aim for today. So let's make this seafood and rice dish in my instant pot. First thing I want to do here is prep the shrimp. I have here 12 large-ish um, shrimp. These are tail removed. I weighed these. They came in at about 5 ounces or 142 grams. They were frozen. They're thawed. And then what I have here is some Chinese five spice. I bought this quite a while ago. It's, uh, it was in the grocery store. It's more than five spices. You can make up your own. There's cinnamon, star anise, fennel, cloves, ginger, licorice, uh, Szechuan pepper, corn, and white pepper in here. And I have here about half a teaspoon. And I'm using this because I had some Chinese friends. They were from Dalian, China. And they used it on seafood, and I liked it. And then what I'm going to experiment today, again, I'm going to do this as easily as possible. I have here some better than bullion roasted garlic base. I've got garlic, but rather than um, mincing up some garlic, I'm going to try this and see how it tastes. And I'm going to be putting about a maybe a quarter teaspoon of garlic in there, this base. Get that in there, and I can always add more. I like garlic with my um, shrimp. I think it's a good flavor to go with shrimp. And I'm going to just kind of mix this around, mix this around, get that, car that garlic and the Chinese five spice distributed. Get those shrimp flavored up. And yes, I did wash my hands, in case you're wondering. So there's my seasoned shrimp. I'm going to set that aside until I need it. I'm heating a cast iron skillet on the stove because I'm going to be searing some scallops. And I want a hot, hot, hot pan. And I'm using safflower oil. I'm going to put a couple, three or so tablespoons of safflower oil in there. I'm using safflower oil because it has a very high smoke point. So this is definitely where you don't want to use extra virgin olive oil. And then I've got one of those guns to read temperature. This is getting up close to 500 degrees. Okay. And then, very carefully, I'm watching it to make sure it's not going to smoke. It's just starting to smoke. I'm turning the temperature down and I'm going to start putting my scallops in there. See, that's really hot. That's what I wanted. So as you can see, I've got seven scallops. You need six to seven, um, but they're sticking. I'm going to keep moving them around to try to keep them from sticking. And I want to just sear them lightly. I'm hoping that's going to take no more than three minutes or so. These are starting to brown. And again, the reason why I'm using safflower oil is because it's got a very high smoke point. You can heat it up to over 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 260 degrees Celsius. Oh, look at that. Some nice searing going on there. Okay, another two to three minutes, and those will be 
seared enough. I don't have to cook them all the way through. I just want to get some nice browning on them. In my instant pot, I'm going to do pot in pot cooking. So I have a stainless steel bowl here, um, but I need a string so I can lift the bowl out easily without burning myself. So I have some cord here. And somebody asked how I do this to get the string so tight. Well, I use what's called a surgeon's knot. And I learned that from somebody who was a fan of my um, YouTube channel. Okay, so here's the string. And you go through three times. That's one, two, three. And then you pull the string tight. And what happens is all that wrapping holds that knot until you can get your second knot in there to lock it in place. And there's your string to hold it like that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse my rice. I've never, I never rinse rice. I've never done it. But I saw someone on the internet and she said, always rinse your rice, go through several rinses, whatever it takes to get the starch off the surface. So that's one cup of dry white rice, came to 200 grams. And this is just cold water to help with the rinsing. And she said, stir it around, stir it around, stir it around. You'll see the water get cloudy. That's the starch coming off. And then I have a sieve to strain it with over the sink. You do this three or four times, whatever is necessary for the water to be clear. I rinsed my rice four times to get what looked like clear water. So there goes my rice. Again, that's one cup by volume, and it weighed 200 grams dry. And then what I saw on the internet that when using a pressure cooker, one to one water to rice by volume is all you need. So what I have here is one cup by volume, 240 milliliters of water in which I dissolved some better than bouillon chicken base. This is roasted chicken base. I put in one teaspoon. The directions on the jar say one teaspoon per cup of water. So that's in there. Kind of stir that around a little bit. And now I'm ready to load my Instant Pot. I put in one cup of water in the bottom of the Instant Pot and then I put the trivet in there. I have a little metal trivet I can put in the bottom. And then I can load my rice on top like so. Put the lid on. Get it lined up right. There it goes. I'm going to set the pressure release valve at the top. You can't quite see that, it's out of the picture, but toward the top, uh, over there somewhere, <laughs> there's a valve. There's two settings, venting and sealing. You want it sealing, obviously, for pressure cooking. And then you want to press the pressure cook button. And I'm going to set the timer for four minutes. So it doesn't take long to cook rice. So there it is, four minutes. And then that should start beeping when it starts up. There it goes. And by the way, the pressure is set to high. So it's starting to heat up. That's my Instant Pot telling me the cooking is done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes. I'm going to let this depressurize for 10 minutes. And then I'm going to use the quick release, the quick depressurize to remove the last of the pressure in the pot. My timer just went off. It's been 10 minutes. 
Now I'm going to quick release the steam by turning the pressure release valve from sealing to venting. You want to stand back when you're doing this. A lot of steam is going to come out of the top. And that won't take long. And as the steam is settling down, a jet is going over. The silver button just went down. That means I can open the pot. Here's the tricky part. This is the test. I have my seafood ready. Is there enough? I'm gonna put that on top of the rice. Stir it around a little bit. Put the lid right back on again. I may even just put that to sealing, although it's not heating right now. And I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes again and see if, is there enough residual heat in that pot to cook that seafood. If not, plan B is to use the saute function to bring heat back up, to bring the liquid inside to a boil. I'll set it back to venting again because I don't need to build up any pressure, just to have more heat going to finish cooking that seafood. Okay, the test. It has been 10 minutes. It's still plugged in, but it's not cooking. Now, According to the internet, the ideal temperature at which to cook shrimp is 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 49 degrees Celsius. I've got my digital thermometer here. I'm going to see what the inside is like. Look at that. 133, 134, another one, 140. These are done. They cooked. Oh, and let me check the um, scallops. 134, 35, 136. These are done. Okay, get this out of the way. I've got a trivet here. I'm gonna take out my, this is why I wanted the string. I can move this off my counter. Take the string off. And then, I want to set up a bowl for myself and see what my dish tastes like. I fluffed some rice with a fork. It looks fluffy. Kernels are all separating. It's not too stuck together. And then let's see, I'm going to put, I think, a couple of my scallops on there. And a couple of my shrimp, maybe three. I had a dozen pieces of shrimp. And then I know this is going to need a little bit of salt because I didn't use any salt in my cooking. And let me check with my red handle tasting spoon and see how salty that, that rice is. That better than bullion has salt in it, but not a lot. Could use a little bit of salt. All right, let's see what this tastes like. That's seasoned with salt now. Get my rice first. The rice is tender. That was one cup of water with one cup of rice. It is one to one. Taste one of my scallops here. Mmm. I love scallops. Taste one of my shrimp. <laughs> See, it has a nice flavor because of that Chinese five spice. That's really good. So excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy an early dinner of my seafood and rice.